What is your name, please? My name is Wendy Farrington. My name is Wendy Farrington. My name is Wendy Farrington. Only one of these young ladies is the real Wendy Farrington. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Barry Nelson, and Kitty Carlisle on to tell the truth. And now here's our host on to tell the truth, Bob Collier. Thank you, and uh, welcome again to To Tell the Truth. Good evening, panel. Good evening, Good evening Bob. Incidentally, for those of you in the audience who do not know, uh, Barry Nelson is sitting in for Orson Bean, who is on a, a pre-Broadway tour of the new musical comedy, Elia Darling. All right, now, let's open up an envelope there and see what we have to offer in this first spot, and if you follow along with me, I shall be very happy. I, Wendy Farrington, am a showgirl and dancer. Currently, I am appearing in a lavish review presented by one of the largest hotels in the Grand Bahama Islands. To keep myself in condition, I spend much of my time, uh, off time that is, on water skis. Water skiing came easy to me since I am adept at skiing on snow. As a matter of fact, I competed for Great Britain in the 1960 Winter Olympics, and then in 1964 was honored by being made captain of the British women's ski team. Signed, Wendy Farrington. <laughs> These three lovely young ladies all claim to be Wendy Farrington. We'll start the questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Oh, thank you. Number three, it says you're a dancer. Do you know the difference between a, a contraction and a release? A contraction and a release? That's a skiing term. Okay. You're too smart for me. Number two, you don't look very tanned. Do you spend time outdoors in the daytime? Yes, as much as I can. But you also I, swim? Yes, but uh, I don't, I'm not inclined to tan. Ah, I see. Number one, uh, what was it like to change moving from the captain of a ski team to a, a chorus girl and a dancer? I think they're both very responsible posts. Are you the captain of the girls in your nightclub? <laughs> uh, no. Number two. Peggy Cash. Believe it or not, I used to belong to the British Ski Club. I was their worst skier. Uh, <laughs> uh, number three, which hotel do you belong to? The Lucayan Beach. Thank you. And... Uh, Number one, what is a sitz mark? A sitz mark is the hole that you make when you sit down in the snow. Thank you. And number two, is there any difference between an ordinary ski and a racing ski? Uh, yes. Well, what is the difference? It's the, um, the poles are uh, different lengths. Thank you. Number three, what do I mean when I say that the skis chatter? They uh, make a noise when they're going over ice. Thank you. Uh, number one, if you're going over ice, how uh, do you... Would you... <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't find the word. Good. Barry, no. Number three, aren't there a lot of accidents involved in skiing? Yes, of course. Well, do you have any advice that you could give anybody about how to avoid accidents? Well, a novice skier should not go to a t the top of a mountain. Is there anything about relaxing when you fall and all that? Yes. Number two, would you name two or three islands in the Grand Bahama Group? Um, New Providence. Uh, I've only been there two months, so I'm not really familiar All with right. them. All right. Number th uh, one, at what speed? How fast can you do this skiing on water? On water, you're dependent on the speed of the boat. Yes, but I mean, how fast could you still have the boat go and still retain your balance? Is there any limit? Uh... Oh, I believe about 60 miles an hour. Yeah. Kitty Carlisle. Number two, is, um, is, is, is water skiing to snow skiing like roller skating to ice skating? In other words, is the balance different? Uh, when you water ski, you depend entirely, uh, mostly on the boat, whereas if you're skiing on snow, it's up to yourself. Thank you. But number two, don't you tip your body differently in, in, uh, in both cases? Number two, do no, you? Number three. I, don't you, me? isn't the balance of your body different? 
Yes. Thank you. Uh, number one, you said you were not the captain of the girls in your group of dancers. What, is the, what are the duties of the captain of a, of a dance group? They're called line captains, and they... And what do they do? And that's all the time we have. I have no time to question that out just anybody. Yet. I want you to mark your ballots now, if you will, please, panel. Mark them immediately without change and without any consultation whatsoever. Vote now for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will, of course, receive $250 for each incorrect vote. Are your ballots all marked? Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number one, Bud. Uh, she, uh, she looks like the kind of girl who's been uh, obeyed when she gives commands, right? <laughs> and she's a strong, healthy girl, and I think she could be on a ski team as well as a chorus girl and dancer. Peggy Cat. Showgirl. Well, I voted for number one because, boy, does that dress fit her. I mean, you know, it just so must be her costume. I mean, Barry. I wouldn't fit in that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Nelson. Uh, uh, number one has a hairdo made up by a propeller there and might have fallen. <laughs> no, it's quite nice, really. But uh, uh, number three just looks to me like somebody, even though she's got long hair, just never falls. So uh, she doesn't have to cut it short. Kitty. Isn't that funny? I voted for number three, too. I thought she gave very good answers to the questions. And um, uh, number one was very good, but number two didn't know about the names of the islands on the Grand Bahamas, and they're not that many. So I voted for number three. Very well, the votes are all in. You heard the reasons given, and minds are made up. Let's find out which of these three young ladies in truth is Wendy Farrington. Will the real Wendy Farrington please stand up? Wendy Farrington is currently appearing. She's currently appearing at the Lucayan Beach Hotel, Freeport, Grand Bahama Island. Very, very lovely young ladies, all of them. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Maureen Gates and I, I'm here on holiday from New Zealand. <laughs> and number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Patty Lee Howard and I'm a receptionist at a model agency. why you're not their busiest model. Checking the score, ladies, you did very well. There were two incorrect votes. That's twice $250 for a nice round total of two of $500 that you take along with you. And we thank you for brightening and beautifying our show. Good night, and God bless you. We'll meet our next team of challengers in just a minute, right after this message. And now let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Hunter Thompson. My name is Hunter Thompson. My name's Hunter Thompson. Follow along with your copies of this one, if you will, please, panel. I, Hunter Thompson, am a writer. Recently, I spent over a year living in close contact with a notorious California motorcycle gang called the Hells Angels. I found the Hells Angels to be an elite organization of outlaws and hoodlums whose philosophy is violence. They dress in filthy leather or denim jackets with their insignia on the back, a winged skull wearing a motorcycle helmet. Although I never actually became a member, for over a year I drank with the Hells Angels, talked with their leaders, and recorded their involvement with dope. I watched them terrorize and intimidate communities as they roared through the streets on stripped-down motorcycles called chopped hogs. My time spent with this gang came to an abrupt and violent close after an argument with a group of Hells Angels. They knocked me down and stomped me. I ended up in the hospital, but I had this story, which is the basis of my new book, called simply, Hells Angels. Signed, Hunter Thompson. Panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Hunter Thompson. Let's start the cross-examination with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you. Um... Gee, when I saw you up there, I thought they looked like Hell's Angels. Number one, uh, are they involved with LSD, the Hell's Angels? Very definitely, yes, ma'am. Th thank you. And number three, uh, did you, were you with the Hell's Angels in Los Angeles? No. Where? San Francisco. Thank you. Good. Number two, 
who is the author that sort of leads the kind of the LSD sect out there in, in, in San Francisco? Uh, Ken Kesey. Thank you. Uh, number three, do you know him? Ken Kesey, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, number one, uh, are the Hells Angels kind of a club? Yes, ma'am. Two, do they pay dues? Number two? Yes, they do. Well, number three, you know, we had them in New Hampshire. Did you ever hear about that? The Hells Angels weren't in New Hampshire. That's what we thought they were. Boy, they went down with bicycle chains. They were just... Barry Nelson. Uh, number two, approximately how many members do the Hell Angels have? It varies anywhere from, I'd say, 100 to 200. Well, where do they get their income? Oh, some of them work. Some of them are petty thieves. Some of them are... Number one, uh, how, uh, why do you think uh, that they are so difficult to deal with? What is the underlying factor have they found? In? Well, basically, they feel that they're uh, not wanted by the rest of the world. They're outcasts. They, they have a chip on their shoulder. Number uh, three, what's the best way of dealing with the problem? With the Hells Angels? Yes. Dealing with them? Why? There aren't so many of them. Why is it so difficult? Uh, well, it's, it's hard to say. Don't I, they break a lot of laws? Why, uh, aren't they enforced? Uh, not really. The only really laws that they break are, oh, speeding infractions more than How anything How do young else. people feel? All right. <coughs> Kitty Carlisle. Number three, you said you came from uh, San Francisco. What is the Haight-Asbury um, district? That's the, basically the beatnik section. Uh, number two, who is Gut in the Hells Angels? Uh... He's sort of a, a drifter, a soldier. Thank you. Number one, uh, what is Kesey's uh, group called? Uh, they're scavengers. They, uh, they, they use various names to keep themselves out, outside the law, really. Number three, there's a big piece in the Trib last, summer, last Sunday about a fellow who was with this group a long time. Do you know his name? Which group? The Hells Angels. With the group? Yeah. Uh, yes, Never it was myself. Uh, number two, uh, the Merry Pranksters gave a party for the Hells Angels. Were you there that lasted two days? Yes. Uh, where did it take place? Tom Poston. House. Did you hear about the musician who was on LSD? He decided to throw himself on the ground and missed. <laughs> <laughs> I have to thank Leonard Lyons for that. Number two, what is, what is iron? What does a motorcyclist refer to as iron? What is iron? No, what is iron? What does a motorcyclist call iron? Iron is a nickname for a motorcycle. It's a term. Oh, there I, thought, no I thought it was like, uh, isn't it? Number one, don't, they, don't motorcyclists call uh, cars iron, automobiles iron? Motorcyclists refer to iron as their motorcycle. That's their, as machine. Their, motorcycle That's their machine. Okay, number three, do those cats have a lot of broken legs and broken thighs and broken knees and things? In... There are a few broken bones, yes. Number two, would you say that they're brave uh, fellas, uh, 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 daredevilish and so forth, or are they just kind of bullies and toughs? I'll let you answer that quickly. Oh, uh, yeah, they're brave fellows. It's... That's all we have time for. It's time for you now to mark your ballot. So mark them immediately without change, without any consultation whatsoever. Vote now, please, panel, for number one, number two, or number three. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number two, bud. I, I thought he was a nice, likable fellow. And if I were a Hell's Angel, I'd rather beat him up than either of the other two guys. <laughs> Crazy cat. I don't want to say anything mean about the Hell's Angels. They may come and get me with their bicycle chain. <laughs> but I voted for number two. Because even though he was mean to them at the beginning, at the end he said that they were brave fellas trying to get back on their good side. Yeah. <laughs> Barry Nelson. Well, anybody who undertakes the kind of thing he did to study them and so forth would have a lot to worry about. Number two looks worried. <laughs> Kitty. I too voted for number two. I voted for him because he, he knew Kesey, and number one didn't know that Kesey's group was called the Merry Pranksters. And I read all about this in Tom Wolfe's piece in the Tribune, so I know all about the whole thing. <laughs> Well, there we are. We'll find out now which one of these three gentlemen in truth is Hunter Thompson. Will the real Hunter Thompson please stand up? Oh. <laughs>
Thank you very much, sir. And much success with your book. Thank you. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Glenn Jacobson, and I manage a new rock and roll singing duo called The Models. And number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Peter Hawk, and I'm a stuntman for television and motion pictures. Thank you. In checking the score, we find that the panel was a little too bright on this one. That means there were no incorrect votes, but in that case, there still is $150 coming your way, along with our sincere thanks for being with us. Good night, and God bless you. We'll be back with our next team and play another game in a minute, but now, listen to this. And now, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Noelle Cannon. My name is Noelle Cannon. My name is Noelle Cannon. Follow along with your copy of this one, if you will, please, panel. I, Noelle Cannon, am a judge in the traffic division of the Los Angeles Municipal Court. <laughs> On the bench, I have a reputation for toughness. However, I make no compromise between my job and my femininity. At my own expense, I decorated my judicial chambers in pink with Louis XIV furniture. I wear bold costume jewelry and dress in the very latest modern style. As a jurist, I feel that the solution to highway safety lies in public education and have suggested that traffic court proceedings be televised. I have also recommended a dual licensing plan for drivers to keep dangerous drivers from the high-speed freeways. In addition to my duties as a judge, I write a column for a daily legal journal. I call it Judicial Canons, signed Noel Cannon. Very well, panel. These three ladies all claim to be Noel Cannon. Let's start this questioning with the star of the Broadway hit Cactus Flower, Mr. Barry Nelson. Barry. Thank you. Uh, number three, how many of these violations do you pass on each day? They set 14 cases in the morning and 14 in the afternoon. And do you dress for both morning and afternoon, or do you wear the same thing throughout? I dress for both. Well, that's very charming of you to do that. <laughs> Number one, if that's what you wish to call yourself. Uh, how, what is this, the uh, freeway speed? 65. Los Angeles. And uh, number two, is there a lot of ticket fixing that goes on in that city? Oh, definitely not. Oh. What is the, number three, what is the greatest single violation that seems to plague this traffic problem? Probably running a red light. Have you, number two, ever been arrested yourself? No, never. Kitty Carlisle. Well, number two, um, I'm sure your motives are correct in wishing to have TV in the courtroom, but uh, I, I'm not sure that I think that's a very good idea from a jurisprudence point of view. Uh, number two, number three, do you, have to be a do you have to be a judge to be uh, a traffic... I mean, do you have to be a lawyer or is it on a point of job? You must be an attorney, and it is on an appointed basis. Uh, number two, where did you go to law school? UCLA. Uh, number one, how, were, how young were you when you got your license? Driver's license? Yeah. Now? My driver's license? Yeah. I was 21. And w number two, uh, what age do you think the limit should be for young people? I would say 18. It, what is the limit in California, number three? I think they can get their learner's permit at 16. And can they drive at night at 16? I believe so. Do you agree with that, number two? Yes, I do. Tom Poston. Uh, n number three, what do you actually wear o on the bench? Do you wear what you're wearing now? No, I wear a robe. A robe, it's very formal. Number two, you, you can decorate your chambers. Any judge, I suppose, can do that. Oh, yes. Can, you can't fool around with that courtroom, though, can you, number two? No, unfortunately, no. Oh, you uh, want to change that, too? Number one, do you know when Kitty said that she didn't think those things should be televised, and I, I'm inclined to agree, uh, don't you think it's going to disturb the balance of your uh, justice if you have television in there live? I think not. I, I think simulated cases, as in divorce court. 
Oh, sure. Oh, I'm off of that. I think that... All right. Number three, how did you actually become a judge? You said it was, you were appointed? Yes. Had you ever served on any kind of judicial panel before? I had been a hearing officer. You had? Yes. Well, if I did something wrong... Peggy Cass. Um, uh, number two, in Los Angeles, which court are you in? Where is your court? I mean, uh... I'm, uh, downtown on Wall Street. Is there a Wall Street out there, too? Oh, yes, oh. definitely. Uh, number three, do you like the miniskirt? Do you um, wear miniskirts? I like it on certain people. Oh. Well, uh... Well, is that a crack at me? <laughs> uh, number one... What's the point of changing your clothes twice a day for morning and afternoon sessions when you're going to put that black smock on anyway? Well, Who's I... Who's see them? Well, I just happen to be a clothes horse. I love clothes. Oh, gee, because I would want to change my clothes twice and put a black, black thing over them. Uh, number three, can you drive in California on a New York license? Under certain circumstances. Well, number two, how long can you drive? If I went out to California, how long can I drive on a New York license without being compelled to get a California license? For three months. Thank you. Um, and that's all the time we have. Time again for you to mark those ballots. So mark them as before without any exchange of information and without changing once you've marked. Vote for number one, number two, or number three. Oh, uh, Mark. Tom, for whom did you vote? Uh, I found it very difficult. I wanted to vote for number three, and I promise you I would have. Except that she said most traffic violations were running red lights, and I don't believe that's true. I voted for number two because she's so unlikely to be a judge in a formal court like that. <laughs> Thank you, Cat. Well, of the three of them, I'd like to come up against three, but I didn't vote for you three. I voted for two because you have to have your license. You can drive for three months on a New York license in California. That is the law. See how different that is? If, if I had said I'd like to come up, come up against number one or two, it would have been a totally different sound in this room. <laughs> how do you know? Well, just a guess. Barry Nelson, well, for whom did you vote? Right. Number uh, two gave the best answers, uh, Bud, and so I eliminated her immediately. And uh, uh, number one is an outright liar, and I would say it to her face, but if the case is tried, I'm afraid she might be the one who does it. <laughs> and I watch that. No, uh, I think it's, uh, I'll have to go along with number three, and I'm not so sure about her. Kitty. Well, it's not funny. I voted for number one. First place, I'd like to see her outside of that robe. And I think that the, the jewelry she's wearing is hers, and it's beautiful. And furthermore, she did switch it a little bit about having TV in the courtroom. Simulated cases for educational purposes, that's different. But I think it would affect the witnesses, and therefore I think she's right. Very well, there we have it again with all the votes in and the reasons given. Mine's solidly made up. Let's find out which of these three ladies, in truth, is Judge Noel Cannon. Will the real Judge Noel Cannon please stand up? Congratulations. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Adrienne Carawan and I work at the first salon of David A. Leventhal here in New York City. <laughs> Number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Constance Kermass. I own the hat check concession at Paul Taubman's Penthouse Club in New York City. <laughs> Thank you. And checking the score, you can all be quite happy because there were three incorrect votes that you induced them to cast, and that's three times $250, total $750, ladies. And thank you very much for being with us. Good night. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Incidentally, Judge Cannon has requested that her share of the winnings be donated to the Volunteers of America, and this shall be done. We'll be back in a minute. Right now, this important message. And don't forget to join us at the same time next week. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon with the daytime show and you two panel. And until then, don't you forget to tell the truth. Bye. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Tottenham production. <laughs> this Carlisle's dressed by Royal Lynn. This is Johnny Olsen speaking. Tonight's program was pre-recorded.
To tell the truth is brought to you tonight by Johnson's Pledge. Pledge for wax beauty instantly as you dust. Pledge. 